Hey mobility gurus, it's Mike here with 5 Minute Mobility. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. In today's video, I want to talk about some of the changes that have happened in Apple Business Manager, especially if you watched my previous Apple Business Manager walkthrough. They're back in October, September of this year, 2020, Apple made some minor UI changes to Apple Business Manager, specifically changed some of the ways that we enroll devices into our MDM, specifically like uploading the CSV file and just uh, changing MDMs, releasing devices, unassigning devices. So those are really the biggest changes that happened back in September, October-ish. So I just want to go through another walkthrough with you guys to show you some of the changes there and what has stayed the same. Let's get into it. So the first thing we want to do, like usual, is go to business.apple.com and, and log in. And I do want to mention, if you haven't seen my previous Apple Business Manager walkthrough, I encourage you to do so. I'm going to touch on a lot of the same components, but I'm not going to go as in depth because there just hasn't been changes to every single area of Apple Business Manager. So if you haven't seen that, give that a, give that a watch. It's about a 10 minutes, but I go pretty what pretty thorough into all the areas of Apple Business Manager. But once we're here, we're greeted, well, we're greeted with our homepage. Should look fairly familiar. Not a lot has changed. It has changed. And again, what has changed? It was back in that September, October era uh, time frame of 2020. So activity feed, uh, again, when we enroll new users, add new users and stuff like that, that will all show up in our activity feed as well as uh, more importantly, when we enroll devices or change enrollment, like unassigning or releasing devices, uh, those that activity will also show up here. Locations, not much has changed here. Um, you still have the same capabilities as you did previously. Um, and again, it's you can get really creative of how you use locations. Locations can come into play when we have different MDM servers and whatnot where we wanna assign different VPP applications to certain locations and stuff like that. Again, check out my previous Apple Business Manager walkthrough. I talk a little bit further into locations. Accounts, again, not much has changed here. One thing that I will mention, um, Apple Business Manager, um, back I believe early of this year, or even late last year, they introduced something with iOS 13 14.4 called Managed Apple IDs. Um, Managed Apple IDs, I'll talk a little bit more further in depth in another video, but essentially they allow you to put a corporate persona on top of a device. And that corporate persona is called a Managed Apple ID. A lot of times you'll hear them called maids. Uh, but uh, it's uh, it's uh, I've seen it used a lot in use cases like healthcare and using Apple services like FaceTime to do telehealth. So there's a couple ways that you can create a managed Apple ID account. Uh, the easiest route is going up here to the plus button, filling out all of this information. And then down here at the role, you want to choose staff. A staff um, doesn't have access to log into the Apple Business Manager portal, but essentially it is a uh, managed Apple ID. So you can assign the username and everything. Make sure you sign a real email address that goes somewhere because you will have to sign up for the account. But more importantly, the, the value of a managed Apple ID is you have control over that so we can reset passwords and stuff like that. But you can also use it as a persona to use Apple services. So like iCloud and stuff like that, um, iMessage, FaceTime and stuff like that can be used on it with a managed Apple ID. I will say a managed Apple ID cannot access the iOS app store. So distributing applications to a, uh, a device that only has a managed Apple ID, you will need an MDM to be able to push those uh, applications via VPP uh, to that device. But other than that, not a lot has changed with accounts. Um, we still got uh, all the different roles here for people manage a device and content. Again, watch my previous video. I go a little bit more in depth there. Roles, um, this is the different accounts that you can create, uh, different uh, roles that you can create when you're creating your accounts. Uh, again, it just gives you, uh, you can have administrators and then it gives you kind of that tree of different users that have different read write privileges within your Apple Business Manager account. Devices, this is where the main change happened in the October, September update. So previously, uh, if you watched the Apple Business Manager walkthrough I did, in the assignment history, I believe you download, you could download the CSV and then go to devices and then you could upload the CSV and then assign it there. Or you can also input the serials and stuff like that. That's not here anymore. This is the biggest change that's happened. So when a reseller adds anything to your portal 
or if you add any devices through something like an Apple configurator, uh, they will show up here under devices. And then you can, if I only have stuff from Apple configurator, but if an order came from a reseller like CDW, it would actually show the order number here. So you can go in, you can go in here and then if it was an order number, it would have multiple devices under that, under this selection I'm in. And then you can go to edit device assignment or in, in, a brand new device it would actually say it would probably say enroll devices and then here you could choose your MDM server or more importantly you can actually unassign it if you need it to do that so that's the biggest change here when you are assigning devices if you're not using some default assignments which I'll go into a little bit later uh, select the order um, uh, or the devices that you want uh, hit edit device management choose your server or unassign it and then if we are releasing it uh, all together you can hit that release and we'll give you a prompt saying hey if we release it we can't get it back in there unless you use something like apple configurator so uh, but that's the biggest change here you can also do a full um, if you want to re-enroll all devices into a different mdm you could do everything up everything globally um, and you know select all the devices globally and, and change their enrollment and stuff like that or you can search by order number by serial and stuff like that directly within here and things will pop up that's the biggest change and then your assignment history really um, you can go in here and down the CSV file if you need it for asset management or thing or anything like that but this is just more activity of what's going on uh, order numbers, anything that pops up from our Apple, Apple configurator. But more importantly, you're just going to be really using the device section to uh, manage your assignments of all your devices. Apps and books, nothing changed here. So all the applications, again, uh, I'll try to go in a VPP uh, video at another time. I know I said I would do that a while ago. Uh, it's on the docket, but uh, I'll, I'll dive into VPP a little bit later in another video. But um, all your applications will show up here. Any custom apps, so um, if, you've, if you're working with an app developer um, at, or you're creating your own custom app and signing it, uh, you can provision that in here and that's where those custom apps would show up. If they're not in the public app store, um, that's where custom apps would come into play. Going down to settings, profile information, apps and books. This is where VPP comes into play. So uh, see all my different locations that I have in Apple Business Manager. So this is where you would download your token and then uh, upload that token into your MDMs to have your VPP and your MDM server talking together so those applications can be shared. Enrollment information, this hasn't changed either. So when if you are looking for your uh, Apple ID, um, ABM ID, DEP ID, organization ID, it's called a lot of different things to a lot of different people. But this is where you find it under settings, enrollment information, and that is the uh, organization, your ABM ID that your reseller will need um, when enrolling devices for you. Under accounts, uh, remember I mentioned earlier managed Apple ID accounts. One way is to just go in there and manually add a staff, and that is a managed Apple ID. But, but if you are using Azure Active Directory, I, I, gotta, I gotta say Azure Active Directory, not just standalone Active Directory, you can federate ABM, which then creates those managed Apple IDs for you. So if you do have Azure AD, this may be something you wanna look into if, you, if your organization is wanting to use managed Apple IDs. A lot of different use cases for them, like I mentioned in healthcare, telehealth is using them to use Apple services. But where I really see managed Apple IDs is where is BYO with iOS 13 or iOS yeah iOS 13. Um, Apple brought a new enrollment method called user enrollment that uh, really pays attention to more privacy uh, on the device. So uh, IT doesn't have as many hands in when uh, managing through the MDM. But more importantly, with user enrollment, we need a managed Apple ID because essentially we have a, have a consumer persona and an Apple persona. So that's where maids come into play. So under device management settings, this is where you can add approved resellers to your portal. So say you, you're working with a reseller like CDW and they need to enroll devices into your portal, they're gonna need your ABM ID, but more importantly, you're gonna need their uh, reseller ID here and add it here. If you don't add that reseller, uh, and if they enroll devices, they're just not going to show up. So make sure that you uh, add that additional reseller here. And then if you are adding an MDM server, uh, this is where you would do it as well. So add your MDM server, give it a title, uh, and then and then check with your MDM provider. They've got documentation typically how to do this, but essentially in your MDM, you would download a token, upload it here, and then ABM would give you a token to download, and then you upload in your MDM, and then they're talking together and being jolly and merry. And then one thing I will also touch on uh, under device management settings is this default uh, device assignment. So 
Uh, if you know that you only are only going to have really one MDM server in here, it may make sense to just auto just to have default assignments for all your applications. So you can, I've got a lot of MDM servers in here because it's just a big lab, but say like I want all my iPads to go to my workspace one and I want all my iPhones to go to my Jamf lab or something like that. Uh, in, in, your, in most cases, most, most organizations usually have one, maybe two, three. So here's where you can create some default assignments. So anytime that an iPhone gets enrolled from your reseller, it automatically gets thrown into Jamf. And anytime an iPad gets enrolled from your reseller automatically gets thrown into workspace one i recommend using that if if it applies to your use case it just makes your life a lot easier and more automation so you don't have to come in here every time you get a new device and and assign it so just uh optimizes my life a little bit more if i can do if, if i can do that and i've seen a lot of other organizations do that as well so those are really the biggest changes that have happened with apple business manager since the september october release uh, so I hope that was helpful for you guys as you continue growing your iOS fleet. Any questions that you guys have, please let me know in the comments. I've been getting great comments and questions for you guys. It's been awesome interacting with you. And if you want to see any additional videos, let me know how else I can help you as you guys continue uh, becoming greater mobility gurus. So uh, again, I hope you guys have an awesome day and thank you very much. Bye.